Muscle tissue serves a number of functions. It supports our skeleton, protects our internal organs, and of course, enables us to move. It also generates heat as it works. In addition to the often clearly visible skeletal muscles, there is also muscle tissue that is not subject to conscious control. These include the muscles in the walls of larger blood vessels and in the digestive tract, where they mix and transport the ingested food. Let's leave these aside and focus on the structure and function of skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles are not directly connected to the bones, but via connective tissue tendons. They are made up of several muscle fiber bundles, which in turn contain many muscle fibers. These can be several centimeters long and have many cell nuclei and mitochondria. Mitochondria are often referred to as the power plants of the cell because they produce large amounts of the energy carrier ATP. Muscle shortening is accomplished by the myofibrils. These themselves consist of a series of smaller units, the sarcomeres. Movements are the result of interactions between the actin and myosin filaments in the sarcomeres. Let's take a closer look at the muscle contraction process. The muscle fiber is excited via a motor neuron, and an electrical impulse spreads along the cell membrane. The impulse reaches the sarcoplasmic reticulum via punctures in the cell membrane. The cell organelle then releases calcium ions. These diffuse to the sarcomeres and bind to troponin, exposing the myosin binding sites. Nothing now stands in the way of interaction between the myosin and actin filaments. A cycle proceeds as follows. The myosin head docks onto the corresponding binding site of the actin filament, performs a tilting movement, and pulls the filament towards the center of the sarcomere. An ATP molecule is then required so that the myosin head can detach from the actin filament. The energy released by the cleavage of the ATP straightens the myosin head again so that a new cycle can begin. If the muscle fiber is not stimulated, the calcium ions are pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the myosin binding sites are covered again. The muscle contraction ends. Single nerve impulses lead to single twitches. However, if we want to perform a powerful movement, the muscle fibers must be stimulated many times in a short period of time. Would you like to discover more about the human body? For instance, have you ever wondered where our heart gets its electrical impulses from? If so, feel free to subscribe to my channel and stay updated with all the exciting content I have to share.